This is where I saw that dude run across that day. And here's another guy going to do the dash as well. There's a footbridge back there. Hello, white horses. Are you white horses or do you have white cloth on? No, you're white horses. <laughs> They're fighting. Hey, chill, dudes. Can we all just get along? <laughs> he keeps sniffing that one's face. Your face smells. Stop smelling my face! But it smells funny. Like I did that day and take me to the place I love. Take me all the way. Eh. Oh my goodness. That is. That's for gypsy weddings. I almost feel like slowing down again so I can see that. I did a gypsy wedding once. I was a wedding planner. And, uh. Hang on, she's telling me something. In two miles, take the exit on the left, right. So for a, for a while I was a wedding planner and I was meant to sell weddings as in convince people to buy them at this venue and um, and I was also meant to um, uh, then put them on and I started doing this job and, and I think the bosses were like oh my god there's a white guy who also speaks Hindi he's going to sell loads of weddings to Indian people um, that did not happen and I was working there for about two months a while and um, still hadn't made a sale and one day this guy comes in and is like I should change his name shouldn't I um, oh, but it's so good anyway he comes in he's like oh, I'm looking for a wedding for my daughter um, and uh, the boss was out and I was like awesome uh, and I'd just been told all of the full full prices I hadn't understood how to discount yet or how to sort of finagle fandango you know do little thingies with the price. Am I meant to be taking that one? No, that's not two miles. And, um, and so he comes in and I tell him the full price for the haul, which you're always usually going to discount at some stage, um, or sort of take some bits off here and there. And I'm like, it's 6,000 pounds for a Saturday. And some people are getting these for like, wait, half that. And he straight away is like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> and I was like, and I and I just thought, okay. So then I'm going to get the paperwork out to sign it and realize I don't know how to do this because I've never sold a wedding before. And he's like, oh, you, you're going to do all the food and everything. And uh, so I was quoting the full price for all of the stuff. And he's like, yeah, I'll take it. Um, I'll pay cash. And. Um, and then I called up the boss and I, and I said, I've, I've sold a wedding, how do I do the paperwork? And he <laughs> says, what do you mean you've sold a wedding? Take the M11 exit, okie dokie. Um, and he <laughs> says, what do you mean you've sold a wedding? I said, a guy came in and sold it. And he said, uh, how's it, has he paid the deposit yet? I said, no, he's good, but he's going to pay cash. And he said, oh, hang on. Is this guy a gypsy? And I was like, uh, I, and I'm sitting in front of the guy. So he's having one of those phone conversations where you're like, I can't, you know, I can't go, I don't know what a gypsies look like because the gypsy's sitting there. A traveler, sorry. And, um, <laughs> and he said, well, is the guy white? And I said, yes. And he said, is he Jewish? I went, I don't think so. And he said, does he have an Irish accent? I went, oh, yes. And he said, right, he's a gypsy, you can't sell on the wedding. And so I was trying in my half, you know, when you're speaking to somebody, and what is that person in front doing? Uh, so <laughs> to say, mm, that's, that's going to be a challenge. You know, that's going to be difficult because this guy's already offered, he said he's going to come back in 10 minutes with the deposit. So he says, okay, sign the paperwork. And then when he doesn't get back there with the deposit or when he takes too long or something, we'll just say we've already sold it for that day. So we go, we, he comes back, this guy goes away, and then we sit there waiting, waiting, and I said, you've got to bring it in by five. For anybody else, you'd wait, sit around till six or seven or eight o'clock. 
and um, <laughs> he comes back on the dot on five giant wad of cash in his hand we're like oh I guess we're doing a travel wedding now <laughs> a big fat gypsy wedding okay here we go now we can bark it up to speed can't we nope nope -na 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 -na. I was getting bored on those other roads so he comes back so we book it and we keep looking for ways to get out of it and bump you know everything is at full price in the hope that he'll keep shopping around and then you know we'll get we'll uh, you know maybe give him back his deposit maybe keep his deposit but whatever it was we, we did not want to do this wedding and i didn't know why i was i was thinking you know why is this so bad i i watched a couple of shows of the gypsy weddings and i started to get a bit of an inkling of why you might not want to do a gypsy wedding but nothing prepared me for the night we put it on. We, we sort of, we wrangled it so it went on in another venue. Uh, the boss saying, you know, I don't want the big bosses, the owners of the venue, to know that we did something so colossally stupid in the wedding business as take a, a uh, traveler wedding. And so I've organized bar staff. They keep, they keep, they're so insistent that they want a bar and they want this bar full and flowing the entire night. He said, don't you come to me if anybody's not paying for their drinks. You make people pay for their drinks right there. No, none of this whole is going to pay for it. And so we're having to wrangle people. At one point, I, you know, what, no, before that, the door opens. And what comes in are these amazing, sallow skin, jovial, but like, you know, like dangerous looking guys. Not dangerous because they're big. They're all sort of, sort of wiry, most of them. Um... But just that look, that steady eye contact, I don't know, they're just dangerous looking. And this wave comes and it's like, bang, doors open, vroom, to the bar. And these gents in these suits, that were pretty nice suits actually, straight away, Guinness, Foster, Foster, six Fosters, one Guinness. And they're constantly trying to play little games with the bar. You know, they're going, oh, I'll have three, and then two more for this chap. And you'll be like, no, 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 you pay for your three, then he can have his. Oh, no, no, he'll pay for the lot. No, nope, not in giving you these drinks until he's paid for them. Because they kept nicking off from the bar with these drinks. And so you having, I was having to grab guys and bring them back. And um, it was pretty interesting. Let this gent pass. Oh, nice little foot wave. He's macking it down there. Look at him. Da, 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 da. And um, <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> the, um, and the guys are coming up to the bar. The girls aren't. So occasionally these guys are ordering half pints of um, of Fosters and then taking them over to ladies. Ladies can't come up to the bar. It's when you walk past. When the guys would have a bit of a chat with you and you know, all ask you a couple of questions and whatnot, the ladies. It was like you didn't exist to them. It was. It was. You know, I had to occasionally go through that part of the hall and. Um, and they would move around and they're wearing these things, these skirts that were like, it was like a hairband that, that wrapped around their bum and vagina. That was it. Uh, uh, you know, these Rio showgirls, sequins everywhere and bright colors and tits like up in their chin. It was awesome. Uh, <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Um, but then the problems started happening. So first the venue manager came to us and went, you, the, the owner of the venue where we're doing it in, came to us and said, you didn't have a, a, another booking at your venue tonight. You knew these were travelers and you, you brought them here. And we were like, what? I the what you mean, maybe. And then the guys, after they've got a few, a few beers under their belts, are having fist fights. They are you know, biffing with one another, punching one another in the face and, and, and tussling and and, uh, and also because nobody's trying to break it up. You know, the moment a fist fight starts, all everybody does is hold everybody else back from getting involved. And then these two guys just sock one another in the face and then hug and make up and go and buy beers for one another. It's, it's incroyable. Uh, so the venue manager is freaking out. There's blood and there's people people are occasionally like smashing glasses and everybody smashes glasses at weddings but these guys are like smash yeah! like yeah we broke something so then the venue venue owner manager 
freaks and goes, that's it, we're shutting off the bar at, um, at 10. It says 10 in your contract. We said, yeah, but you told us we could have it open at, until one o'clock in the morning. That was our agreement. That's the whole reason we've come here. And he said, yeah, well, that was when I didn't know it was going to be gypsies. You, you signed a contract that said 10. So that's a bit of a lesson. Mm, pay attention to what you're signing. Uh, and so he said, that's it. The bar's shut. You can't serve any more alcohol. And we know this is going to be a big problem. Partly because in order to do all these funny things to book another venue, we've, we've started losing money on this deal. The whole thing we've been saying all along is... If we've got that bar flowing with alcohol and we're selling these beers at like four quid a beer and we're buying the kegs at hell knows how what, but we've got beer taps and, and all of this other equipment we've got to rent and we've got to get um, decorations, we've got to pay the chef. And um, and then when he said he's shutting the venue, we, we realized very quickly we're gonna lose money. But we realized very sooner than that is this is gonna cause huge problems. So we go and we quietly say this and it's like you're fucking not you're not you know who i am you know who we are <laughs> and and we were like yeah but just can't no gonna do and so we said i whisper around to the people i say start stacking stuff away and we're trying to stack stuff away behind the bar still serving bottle i mean uh tap beers because that's going to be the last thing we're going to remove but we're taking no sorry we're taking the taps off the tables but saying oh we're just selling bottle bills we've got a bit of a problem with the taps uh and that obviously is not going to fly with this chap and um and we start stacking the things away and the party goes it's just bedlam from that point forward <laughs> they are leaping over the bar they're going for the till, so we're running away. I'm hiding the till when I come back out. They've just grabbed one of the whole eskies filled with, um, what do they also like to drink? Those blue drinks. Horrible blue lolly water. And I thought it was all giving these to the girls. Nope, the guys like drinking them. Uh, some of them. It was like Guinness Fosters and that. Harlow exit. Oh. Split my throat. Split my throat. Split my throat. Uh, so it's it's pretty cray at this stage but they're jumping yeah they're jumping over the bar they've just grabbed this whole esky of that's it wkd um and be, bo bottled beers and canned beers and just run off with it <laughs> and they're opening it up and they're going outside and they're drinking and they're peeing on the venue uh and then they just realize hey none of this stuff's ours so they're grabbing the centerpieces with the giant vases and just smashing them into one another and glasses going everywhere and there's this archway over the back of the stage and it's just it's yeah it's going nuts um they, they get this the archway and they smash it into two pieces and there's like a nine tier cake which we later realize is actually like six tiers of styrofoam nicely dressed styrofoam and then just the top three are um are the actual cake and they find this out and so they're pulling the cake to pieces and kicking around bits of styrofoam and hand feeding themselves bits of cake and just smashing things flip you know flipping over the tables it is just utter bedlam it's quite cool uh to watch but kind of scary because i brought you know five or six girls there to the venue who are freaking out at this stage so we've got to barricade ourselves in the kitchen um you know before you know while it's all going to hell i've had the bride come up to me normally they don't talk to anybody she's like please you can't shut this down this is the biggest day of my life please and i'm looking at her poor cute little face they're so pretty a414 fourth exit right we're going all the way around this puppy You could have just gunned it. You waited till you're in the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, so smash the thing apart. Um, uh, the family were obviously pissed because they had spent a lot on this. Here we are, out in the countryside. Country, sorry.
So it was, I mean, it goes down as, I mean, it was a terrifying night. There were a few times I had to square off with these guys and they know how to fight. They, I don't know how to fight. <laughs> and they just, you know, they'd look at you in the face and you'd watch them. You'd watch them sort of um, drop their non-dominant shoulder towards you a bit or something. You know, this thing where they're like winding up to, to take their good hand away from you. You can tell they're considering you're going, oh, I could just, my man, just punch you in the face. Like, they're considering it. Um, and that's scary. Uh, also, just being surrounded and going, well, I am, like, we are in London, but I am in the middle of... I am in the middle of somebody else's culture here, and I don't, I don't know the rules. And, um... Yeah, it's it's what struck me. I mean, I guess that as and I was later told by a couple of um, uh, people who are also travellers that this was this was generally the way to go. Which is don't instigate fights, don't insult people, don't think, but don't back down. Don't sort of suddenly start apologising. And so when I was saying, telling them, I was like, oh no, if they were nicking drinks, I was grabbing them by the scruff of the shirt and yanking them back. Um, but then smiling and being like, oh, you didn't get one by me. And that seemed to, it seemed to work. Um, it, it's, it, yeah, but it was barricaded in the kitchen for a while with all the cash from the drawer and his father saying, you owe me for an entire wedding. Cause he was, he was like, I'm gonna get the money back out of you for this and I'm gonna put this whole thing on again. And, uh, and my first commission, when we tried to calculate the commission that I should have got off that wedding, uh, it turned out I should have paid the company 600 quid. So if you guess it, how much commission I was making, which wasn't much, you can guess that I lost them quite a bit. Oops, I didn't listen to what she just said now. You gonna tell me again? You gonna tell me again? I think she said stay on 0414. 